I spent five years of my life making a game completely solo. And I'm not complaining. It was it was great. I mean, it paid off, but it was tough. It was really, really challenging. And there are five mistakes that I made as a solo developer that I really want to share with you so that you don't make those mistakes yourself. These these are a lot of them are emotional mistakes that you can make as a solo developer. And believe it or not, emotional mistakes are always way more challenging and way more detrimental than maybe a technical mistake that you're going to make. Oh, by the way, my name is Thomas Brush. Uh, let's get started. Before we talk about these five mistakes that I made as a solo developer, I want to tell you about something that I really do love. I really do love this sponsor, and that's Skillshare. Uh, it's a great place for you guys to learn how to do all of the millions of things that you need to learn to be a solo developer. Um, it's great because you don't have to spend all your time digging around on Google looking for the right answers. You could take courses that are tailor-made for you to learn specific things about being a solo dev, whether it's illustration, animation, sound design, storytelling, coding, Unity, Unreal, whatever it is that you need as a solo developer, you can learn it on Skillshare. So if that seems like something you're interested in, you can get two free months by clicking the link below. The first mistake that solo developers are likely going to make is they're not going to trust their gut. Now this might be a weird thing to bring up especially for the first point. But I found that making a game for five years solo, I found it really difficult to just go for it and trust my gut with a lot of decisions. Sometimes you really shouldn't trust your gut. And we're gonna talk about that in the second point. But here is one really good tip for when you should trust your gut. And that is when you are extremely passionate about something and there is something that you've been thinking about for a long time. So a good example of this is when I was starting production of my current game, Once Upon a Coma, there was one core idea that I could not get away from. It wasn't something that was incredibly profound and unique that wasn't in the game industry. It was the simple idea that I wanted to be able to explore a world as a child. That's what I wanted the game to feel like. I wanted to be about that. And that was the idea that I couldn't get out of my head. A lot of people may have said, Thomas, that's not very unique. That's not going to sell. And they might be right. It might not sell. But it's just something that I can't get out of my system. And it's what drove me to finish the game. After two, I think it's two and a half years of production, that core concept, that one idea of being able to be a child in a big, strange world, that's what drove me to finish the game. So I'm really glad that I trusted my gut there because that meant that I was going to finish the game. See, a lot of times, trusting your gut is just going to let you finish the game. That's like the hardest thing to do as a game developer, especially a solo developer, is finishing your game. And trusting your gut gets you there. Now, the second thing that a solo developer is gonna struggle with, a mistake that they might make, and I made this, is that you trust your gut in the wrong times, okay? The wrong time to trust your gut is when you're frustrated, when you're angry, when you're worried, or you're anxious. A lot of times this has to do with just the time of the day. For me, I've learned my gut should not be trusted when it's early in the morning. If I get up at six, seven, eight o'clock in the morning, start working, I'm grumpy, I'm not a morning person, so I know this is not a good time to make some crazy decision and trust my gut. I know that my gut should be trusted when it's maybe after the gym or after lunch when I'm in a good mood, when I've had some food or after a cup of coffee. Um, and I also know that I should be trusting my gut about things that I'm not necessarily passionate about. So a good example of this is when you have feature creep in your game. When you feel insecure about your game and you have lots of features slowly creeping into your game because you're insecure and you start adding features here, adding features there, adding features here. This is the last time you should be trusting your gut because feature creep is often because you are feeling insecure, you're afraid of your game, you're afraid it won't be successful, that it won't be commercially viable. This is the last time you should be trusting your gut. And what I've also learned is it's really good to have a group of advisors, people who you trust, people who you respect, who have wisdom, 
a group of advisors to tell you when you should be trusting your gut and when you shouldn't be trusting your gut. Don't listen to just somebody who tells you don't trust your gut. You need to be listening to people who you really, really trust, people who you know deep down want to see you succeed. And for me, that's my family, that's my dad, that's my wife. These are people who I trust. I trust their opinion. And you know, oftentimes it's not necessarily they understand what a good game is, they understand you. People who understand you, who understand how you tick, they're gonna tell you, Thomas, that's not a good idea. See, your gut should be trusted when it comes from a pure artistic place. And a lot of times you don't even know when that's happening, but people around you who are close to you, they do. The third problem that solo developers make is they take funding way too early. And the reason why solo developers take funding too early, and what I mean by funding is like working with a publisher or getting investment. Why do you think that solo developers will take funding a little too early? What do you think? Well, it's probably because they're scared, right? Or they're running out of money, or they, they need some support, or they feel lonely, and they're just wanting something to validate their project. Please, 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 please be careful. Don't take funding too early. Don't take funding too early. I know it's tempting because a publisher, they wave thirty to $100,000 in front of your face and they say, hey, we'll give you this money if you give us X percentage of your game. It's really tempting to take that money, especially when you're solo. It can get lonely. It can get really, really lonely. But you need to have faith in your project. And see, I know a lot of you are thinking, holy $30,000, $100,000, that's so much money. It's not that much money. It's not that much money when you think about the time invested in your game. Think more accurately of yourselves, how valuable your time is. When I first got out of college, I was making $38,000 a year, and I was speaking to someone who is older than me and wiser than me, and they said, Thomas, that is not a lot of money. That is not a good amount of money. And I said, I just got out of college. This is great. You should be proud of me. And this per I was kind of offended by what they said. They said, no, you're worth $70,000 a year. You're 70,000 or more. And what this person was actually doing was they were doing something that was actually very flattering. They were telling me that I was worth way more than what I had accepted. See, a lot of times we take a low ball because we are afraid of the future or we don't value ourselves. You're worth way more than you think you are. And a lot of these companies, and I, I would never say this about my current publishers, but I know this happens and I have a lot of friends where this happens a lot. People take a price that they should not take. You should be upping the price. So I would recommend obviously reading a lot of negotiation books, try and figure out how to negotiate a better deal. And I'm certainly learning how to do that. Overall, don't take funding too early. The best thing you can do is to run out of money making something incredible and then when you run out of money when you run out of steam or time or energy or creative output when you run out that's when you start looking for money you don't need to do it early okay and the reason why another reason why is because simply put when you run out of steam that's when probably the product is at its highest value that you can start pitching it to publishers you don't want to pitch it to a publisher when all you have is a trailer you want to pitch it to a publisher and investor when you have a really solid demo so that they can offer the highest price point. The fourth mistake that solo developers make is, let's flip it on its head, they wait too long for funding. See, when I was working on Pinstripe, I waited four years before I looked for funding. This was terrible. This was not a good idea. And the reason why is because I don't know what the law is called. It's some kind of law or rule or theory or something where it's like, basically I had put so much effort and time into this game, early mornings, working through lunch, working through the evening, working like sneakily at my desk job to get this game perfect. I had done so much effort that it was like, okay, you need to find money. You need to find a publisher so that you can work full time on this thing. There's only so much you can get done part time and you're probably never going to finish your game if you don't get some money to be able to work full time in your game. So it's really a balance, right? You don't want to wait too long. <laughs> you don't want to go too early. You want to hit it just right. 
See, the thing is, is a lot of you are, have been working on a game for a while, or maybe you've been working on a game for a short period of time, and the idea of getting funding and getting investment is, is nowhere in your mind. You don't even think about it because it sounds like a dream, right? You're thinking, I will never sign a deal for $100,000. I'm not like Thomas. I'm not like those other developers. I'm not talented enough. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Think positively about yourself. Think highly of yourself and start thinking about when it is time to get funding. Get a really solid demo together, a great demo, and start pitching that game to publishers. Now again, you wanna be careful. Is it time? It's kinda of like Goldilocks, right? You don't wanna to go too early, you don't wanna to go too late. Try and feel out when you feel like it's per a perfect time. The best time is when you run out of energy and you run out of money and you run out of that time and effort and you feel like you can't keep going. That's when you start looking for a publisher. Ah, Number five, you work in a panic. Solo developers tend to work in a panic. You look at their office. See, my office looks clean right now, doesn't it? I've got my puppy. I've got my screensaver. It's clean. Oh, wow, Thomas. Your life is so clean. How do you how do you do it? If I turned the camera around, it's a mess. It's a mess. And see, the thing is is you want to make sure, don't be like me. Do as I say, not as I do. Keep your lifestyle and your office clean. Don't work in a, in a frenzy. Don't work in a panic. Have a schedule. Have a clean list of, of things that you need to do. Because the thing is, is when you work with a team, you kind of motivate each other, right? One person says, we should be doing this. We should, let's, like, we should be more task oriented, for example. And you say, oh, that's a good idea. And then you say, we should be more, um, our creative output kind of suffers. We should do fun things together. We should go see movies or we should play games together so that our creative output is more inspired. And they say, oh, that's cool. So you build each other up. But when you're solo dev, it's really hard to build yourself up. So what happens is you typically go into a death spiral where you're constantly trying to have good output, but you're in a frenzy doing it. You're kind of like, I've talked about this before, you're kind of like a squirrel trying to gather nuts as fast as you can for the winter. And that's what I do. I try and get a game done as quick as I can before I run out of money or before I run out of funding. This is a terrible way to be creative because you can't be creative when you're constantly frustrated or in a frenzy. The solution to this is to not necessarily stop being a solo dev. It's surrounding yourself with people, with a team that maybe they don't have stakes in the game, right? But they're with you and they're there to support you and they're there to advise you. And again, this comes down to having a group of advisors, people who you trust, who know you as a person. Maybe they don't know a lot about the industry, but they know you as a person and they tell you when you need to slow down, when you need to speed up, when they feel like you're, you need a break or you, maybe you don't need a break, maybe you need to work harder. It's good to have people to help you gauge how crazy you are. I tend to get into a frenzy when I don't need to get into a frenzy and sometimes I sleep in a little too late, I take too many breaks. I'm kind of random and I need somebody to help me do that and my wet. <laughs> Did you hear that? My wife definitely helps me sort of temper things when I need to or pick it up, kick it up a notch when I need to. All right guys, those are five solo dev mistakes that I've made and I hope you really enjoyed those. Those are, for me, those are really the, the biggest hurdles that I had. You would think that it would be technical or financial, but really it's it's a lot of emotional hurdles that you've got to cross when being a solo developer. If you guys like this video, please hit subscribe, hit the like button, and leave a comment, and I'll try and answer as best as I can. It really, really means a lot that you guys support me. Thank you so much. Talk to you later. Bye.